What's going on today, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Plugin Police. I'm your host, two massive guys, one little sandbox. And today we'll be reviewing Sandbox by Kyle Beats. You know, I gotta give them their props because this is the buggiest plugin I have ever seen. All right, so what is Sandbox? It's a new synth slash sampler by the creator of the Drip plugin. It pretty much does what any wavetable synth already does, but the main thing that makes this one a bit different is the harmony section. It should call it a chord section in my opinion though, because it's more so what it is. I mean, I guess technically it's harmony. In the video, Kyle keeps describing it as something to generate melodies, but all it does is generate chords or arpeggios, and I wouldn't really consider those melodies. First, I'll tell you guys the good things about it, the bad things about it, maybe like some demos or something, and then I'll give you my conclusion. The thing I do like about this plugin is that it has a harmony feature built directly into it. It makes you wonder why no one's ever done this before. You'll see why a little bit later in the video. This could be useful for someone with limited musical knowledge or someone who wants to work with a different workflow, but it begs the question, why wouldn't you use Captain Chords or Scalar or a MIDI pack or something, right? Now the UI does have some cool things about it. I do like the general aesthetic of it, but there's quite a few glaring problems when it comes to using the actual interface in my opinion. There are some pretty good sounds here and there if you're able to get to them, but it also feels like there's uh, quite a few mid sounds in there as well too. It's actually quite a few sounds in this though, and there's quite a few effects as well too. But I would say there's quite a few synths, even free synths, I'd rather use instead of this one. Alright, now the first bad thing about this. There's no cool animation, man. Come on. Where's the thing I liked about Drip? Now the first thing I really want to talk about here is the price. Genuinely, what is the price? If you go to their website, there is no information on it, at least at the time of the recording here. It just says download sandbox and it says for 35% off on Black Friday weekend. Scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. It gives you information about it. Uh, nothing. So how do you how do you purchase it? You click download, you put in your email and then they'll give you the price then, which is already kind of strange. But once you do so, you'll see that it costs $9.99 a month. It may cost a bit less, a bit more, depending on when you're checking this out or whether or not you get the monthly or the yearly plan. If, then also in the comments of the release video, Kyle said that if the video gets 1,000 likes, they'll include a way to purchase it permanently without a subscription. Again, that's another big problem here. It's a subscription only. You don't get to own this thing forever. But according to Kyle, you don't own anything forever anyways. So I'm, I'm thinking you should start charging a monthly subscription on Drip, hmm? right? But one massive issue, other than the crashing, is that at least on Ableton, there's no undo function. Let me show you guys here in real time. There, there's so many problems, by the way. There's a lot of problems here. But this one, this one shocked me. Let's change some things around, right? Change the shape, change the waveform. So you look around for an undo button. Hmm, I don't see an undo button. Strange. Okay, let's keep looking. Maybe we'll find it. This little gear icon does nothing, okay. Um, if we click the clicks thing, does that do anything? No, that just changes the scale. Okay, click this button, it changes the sound. Okay, how do we undo then? Okay, so I'm gonna select the window, click Control Z. Click it again. Oh, look at that, it was controlling my DAW. Even though I clicked the window, I was within the window. The undo did not undo anything. Now I noticed when I watched another video of someone using this in Logic, they had an undo button at the top. I'm guessing that's a part of Logic. So this is a glaring problem here because that means you literally cannot make an error in this while using it in Ableton and maybe some other DAWs too, but at least in Ableton, if you make an error, you're stuck with whatever you have there. They should at least just have an undo button within the synth, right? I mean, I feel like even for someone who doesn't know about control Z, this should just be like common sense, I feel like. So there's problem number one. That's a big fucking problem. Anytime I accidentally clicked on something or I press undo, it was over with. So this is a smaller problem here, but I've got some really big problems as well too. Whenever you select a scale or chord, it doesn't change the color of what you have selected in there. So it would make sense in my opinion if you selected the minor scale, if the minor scale was white after that, that way you know that you have the minor scale selected and you're gonna know what to play in the minor scale while playing along to it. Since we're here, I'll get to my next problem here. Let's say I make a really cool chord progression. It'd be nice if I could drag the MIDI out of this back into my DAW if I wanted to be able to edit it easier or uh, bring it to another synth or just do anything with it basically or use it to write a melody or something. Next issue, no plugin resizing. Now I could, I could live with this if it weren't for the fact that some of these menus, the text is incredibly small. Like look at this. This is a menu for ants. 
It might be. This could have been great. This idea has potential. The execution was not what I was going for. So the UI, I feel like is, is extremely unintuitive. Now it's wouldn't be a problem if it weren't for the fact that there's no manual. There's literally no manual. It doesn't come with a manual. There's no manual on their website, at least from what I could see, at least at the time of me recording this. And when you mouse over things, it doesn't tell you what they do, except for a few things, basically. Like uh, for here, like frame, it does It does this with frame here. It does it with sampler. But like, for instance, if you wanna mouse over this gear button, it doesn't tell you what it does. If you wanna mouse over like quite a few things, it doesn't tell you what it does. This little glasses thing, what the fuck does that do? I don't know, let's mouse over it. Nothing, don't know what it does. It seems like it, it, it like affect parameters or something if I had to guess, I don't know. It's a guessing game trying to figure out what a bunch of these things do. This one's a little bit of a smaller issue. When you change the rate here and the harmony, cause like if you have all these to the left, it plays a chord. If you drag it over, it starts to do more of like an arpeggio or it like separates the notes. It doesn't tell you at what rate it's separating them though. Again, mouse over would be really useful here. Now, the biggest issue of them all is the crashing. I experienced quite a few crashes with this, and I have a feeling it has something to do with the CPU usage. I'm guessing one of the reasons why no one's really attempted to do all of this in one plugin is because it's just too much for one plugin. I mean, that's part of the reason why the UI feels so cluttered, in my opinion. I've seen it use like 30% CPU. I have a really beast computer, by the way. Like, I haven't had a single problem with any sort of, with anything, basically. Like, unless I'm like oversampling, uh, playing on like max resolution or something with Soothe with like 10 instances or something. Like, I do not have CPU problems generally, but I've run into CPU problems more often with this than anything else I've used. Also, I experienced the weirdest crash bug earlier. So I've, it's probably crashed on me at least three or four times. And I generally almost never get any sort of crash. The one really good beat I made with this, I did record it because I did notice it was acting funny. I had a feeling it was gonna crash or I was gonna lose the project or something. I did, I was able to save it and I was able to get a recording of it. But watch what happens when I open it. This will be shocking because I've never seen this bug before. This is a new bug to me. I've been using Ableton for quite some time too. I wouldn't say 10 years, but somewhere between five to 10 years. Yeah, no, I mean, if you're new to Ableton, Ableton's not supposed to look like this. This is not a blank paint document either. This is my project that I saved earlier. It's doing things I did not know you could even do to your DAW. Now, this didn't happen with any of my other project files. This was the only one that was just completely fucked. We can just listen to this one real quick here. I did use the core generator for this one also. So I will say that is one thing that I do like about this. And I honestly like would consider using this if all the other bugs got patched out of it. Also the fact that it's subscription based would probably keep me from using this in the long term, anyways, regardless, even if it was completely fixed. So what went wrong with this plugin? I don't know for sure exactly because they said in the video they spent $150,000 making this. So, I mean, it seems like there's a lot of bugs like a lot more than I've seen with pretty much any other software I've used. I'm guessing that it's for a few reasons. Even if they really did spend that money, I'm guessing it's for a few reasons. One, they tried to do a lot with this, like um, like borderline too much. And because of that, it's hard to do all the testing you would need to do. It's hard to optimize it. I mean, I'm, I'm wondering, was Kyle the only tester on this other than the, the eight dudes they had in the video? I'm guessing all those people use FL Studio as well. So I'm guessing maybe it wasn't tested as much in other DAWs. I'm guessing how they, that's how they missed the the need for an undo button in Ableton in particular. I'm also really not a fan of the subscription plan. I don't know why they pushed for that so hard. Like maybe it's because they spent a lot making the plugin. Maybe they thought it was like really good. Most people I've seen in my comment section and in there, quite a few in their comment section, were not a fan of that. I mean, I don't want to pay $10 for the rest of my life for this plugin or any plugin really, especially for a singular plugin. Like generally when you're paying for a subscription plan, you're paying for like a bundle of plugins or it could be a single plugin that gets monthly updates with new content such as output arcade so yeah I feel like that's a bit disappointing here and generally those plugins they have absolutely no bugs you can't be charging people monthly for something that's full of bugs that's crazy I'm not sure how much alpha and beta testing went into this thing but I think a lot more should have happened they need more people doing this shit they should hire me to do this because I will find all the bugs trust me but you have to pay me a lot Kyle because I kind of make a living like 
finding what's wrong with plugins. This really got me thinking though. I think I should make my own plugin. I introduced you the FUPM box. Fuck you pay me box. I spent literally $250,000 making this plugin. And when I say me, I really mean my developer. I keep him in a cage. Get back to work, Steven. We're not done working on the next plugin. Sorry about that. Now, this may not look like much, and that's because it isn't, but it's what you start off with. It's free when you start off, but you only get a C note when you start off. And if you want more notes within your scale, you're gonna have to pay us money. For every time you pay us, you'll get another feature. If you want more notes, fuck you, pay me. If you want another oscillator, fuck you, pay me. If you want another five preset patches, fuck you, pay me. If you want an undo button, you know what I'm gonna say. Get your copy today at weaverbeats.com slash kids. This plugin is not sold anywhere, and if you fell for this, you're a complete idiot. But also, you can check out my sample packs, Ableton Racks, at that website. So what do I give this plugin? Honestly, I don't fucking know. It's too broken for me to really rate it. I think they really tried to do something great here, and I think it, like, failed spectacularly. Like, I, I genuinely could not use this going forward because it's, like, too unstable. It costs money monthly. The UI is super strange and a lot of things in it are really small. I, I just I just couldn't see myself using this. I don't know what to give this. I give this a, uh, it's broken out of 10. I'm your host Weaver Beats, massive hater. Make sure to check out my Discord, my second channel. And uh, if we get to 25,000 by the end of the year, I have to shave my head. So this, this will all be gone. I'll see you guys in the next video.